All righty. Welcome back to Disney and children's literature. Um, for this module, we'll be talking about Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And I chose to name this um, presentation after kind of the staple quote from this um, film, Mirror, Mirror on the Wall. Um, so yeah, let's begin. So what's the story? Um, so Snow White has become kind of one of the uh, staple stories when you think about Disney. And so it follows the story of Snow White and she has this evil mother, kind of the evil stepmother trope. And the evil mother, um, she is a witch and she has this magical mirror and she goes to the mirror and says, smear mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all. And um, it shows Snow White. Well, this cannot be the witch wants to be the fairest of them all. So she orders a huntsman to um, kill Snow White and abandon her in the woods. And um, so the huntsman goes and abandons her in the woods but cannot bring himself to kill her so he just leaves her in the woods and acts like he did kill her and then Snow White stumbles upon this hut and that is where the seven dwarves come in she befriends the seven dwarves and they start living together in peace she helps out around the house etc then the um witch mother stepmother evil stepmother trope kind of um character goes back to the mirror and she finds out that Snow White is still alive. And so she disguises herself as an old hag, which you can see in this um, middle right picture here and brings a poisoned apple to Snow White. And the poisoned apple puts Snow White into a forever sleep. And then the um, seven dwarves put her in this glass coffin and she is there for a year until a prince stumbles along, finds that she's the most beautiful woman he's ever seen, and he kisses her, and she, this breaks the curse and awakens her um, from her forever slumber. Um, okay, so the history of Snow White. So um, the Disney adaptation is based off a Brothers Grimm tale, um, it's story number 53 in Grimm's Fairy Tales, which was published in 1812. And it also goes by Snee Witchin, um, which is the original name of the story. Um, and the final version of the story from the Brothers Grimm was published in 1854. So there are many, many versions of this story. Um, and it's important to recognize also that um, the Brothers Grimm stories are not um, always based on things that they made up themselves. These have a long past of oral tradition that are passed down. Um, and so, for example, many people think that this story is based on a real life story of a countess and Philip II of Spain. So uh, Margaret von Waldeck was supposedly poisoned at 21 after falling in love with Philip II. Um, Margaret had an evil stepmother of sorts, um, but she died before Margaret, so the story does not fit um, and does not match up with the Snow White story. But additionally, in the minds that uh, Margaret's father owned, most of the workers were children, so could this be the inspiration for the Seven Dwarfs? Um, and this kind of theory is talked about in um, Snow White, Fairy Tale or Truth by um, Eckerd Sander. Um, and this was a major publication that talks about, you know, if Snow White has a um, base in reality, um, and that's where the story came from. Um, so that's one possibility. Additionally, many people um, compare it to um, Shion in Ovid's Metamorphoses, Metamorphoses by Graham Anderson. Um, Shion was one of the most beautiful wom women, and Hermes and Apollo fell in love with her. Hermes puts Shion asleep in order to have sexual relations with her. Um, this is often compared to the Snow White story because the prince does kiss Snow White while she is asleep. And there are there is there has been some controversy over consent. Um, and this reminds them of Ovid's work um, here. So there are some parallels that people have drawn, um, like Graham Anderson. Um, so yeah, so Disney's adaptation of Snow White um, was released in 1937. 
Um, and this was one of the first animated musical fantasy films um, that Disney released here in this um, little tabloid picture, um, his first full-length feature production, Walt Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Um, and so around 250 animators worked on this film. It was um, a pretty big film, had a really big team. And um, it turned out being turned out to be a uh, commercial success with over um, eight million dollars in earnings during its initial release in the box office. Um, and due to popularity, it was re-released theatrically multiple, multiple times. Um, and so eventually this led to the United States Library of Congress selecting the film as one of the 25 films for the National Film Registry. Some of other some other Disney films are um, in that um, film registry, and we'll be talking about those later in different modules. And so, yeah, like I said, this was Disney's first full length animated film. And so prior to this, Disney had only released short cartoons and short films. Um, so this was a really big project. And so it was very daunting, but um, it launched the Disney name further into the film industry and really established the success that the Disney company would have in future years um, and really laid that foundation for Disney's name in um, film and um, animation. So if we are to look at changes in the adaptation, um, the fairy tale explains Snow White's mother's whereabouts. So um, the film kind of throws the reader into the main story while the fairy tale kind of explains that the witch and slash mother, stepmother figure is not Snow White's true mother. Um, the film kind of throws the reader into the main story and doesn't really bother with that backstory as much. Um, additionally, in the Grimm's Tales, the huntsman brings back a boar's lungs and liver instead of Snow White's heart. Um, so originally in the Grimm's Tales, Snow White wanted proof of um, the huntsman murdering um, Snow White and said, bring me back her heart. And Snow White's stepmother was going to eat her heart. So this has elements of cannibalism. Um, and so, you know, it makes you think about what ideas from, you know, these children literature stories, these children's stories are made for these children's movies. So obviously that part is left out because we do not particularly want children seeing um, cannibalistic characters. Additionally, um, Snow White's slumber. Um, in the original tale, Snow White's only asleep for three days, but in the movie, she's asleep for a whole year in her glass coffin. Um, we kind of see this in the bottom picture here with the... Um, dwarves and everyone kind of just sitting around um, her uh, casket. Um, so, you know, she's asleep for a whole year. Um, could this be for dramatic effect? You know, three days, obviously it is a long time to be asleep, but a whole year um, is a long amount of time and adds some of that dramatic effect. So we do see kind of um, elements of, you know, movie and capturing um, people's attention. Um, and those effects on the adaptations of um, these classic children's stories. Additionally, we see romance and true love's kiss. Um, true love's kiss is a very big um, kind of trope motive that we often see in Disney movies and traditional children's literature. Um, so in the Grimm's tale, the prince actually dislodges the apple from Snow White's throat. And so that's the reason why um, the prince's kiss um, wakes Snow White up. Well, in the Disney movie, that's not the case. It's, you know, the true love's kiss. And so I think it's really important to think about the effect of true love's kiss, especially in modern media. We've seen this, you know, in live action movies as well. It had a very big impact on the movie in industry as a whole. Um, additionally, I think it says something about um, the aspiration to be in a relationship, um, the aspiration to find true love, to um, the aspiration of the uh, nuclear family almost, that is kind of instilling that value there. Um, finally, also we have um, the queen's death. So in the film, the queen um, falls off a cliff to her death. We see that here in this bottom picture. But in the original tale, she is forced to dance in red hot iron slippers until she drops dead. Um, so it brings in questions of what is suitable for a children's film. Um, so, you know, was 
you know, obviously Grimm's brothers tales were meant for children, but how was were, these tales were often told to adults as well. And so these are definitely some serious, more mature um, ideas. And um, in the original tale, this is at the wedding and it's kind of like a revenge. Um, the prince and Snow White invite um, the stepmother to the wedding, but then she is eventually led to her death. Um, so it, it all has ideas about, you know, how morbid um, can these stories be and how much can children handle, um, which I think goes along with a lot of the ideas we've talked about this semester with, um, you know, what do we, 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 we come across a very general conclusion that children's literature can teach something. So what are we teaching them um, and how are we doing that? Um, finally, the tales end. Um, the film shows Prince and Snow White wandering off towards the castle and they all live happily ever after. Um, but the original tale ends with a formal wedding and the queen's torture at the wedding with the dancing on the red hot shoes. And so we kind of see those beginning ideas of the happily ever after um, kind of glossing over, um, you know, sugarcoating some of the more um, morbid, deeper details of the story that we see. Um, and this happily ever after, um, you know, ha plays a very big role in the children's literature that we see today. And it definitely is a big criticism of um, children's literature, children's movies, because oftentimes people think that children should be able to embrace and talk about these kind of difficult topics. Um, and happily ever after kind of shields them from that. Um, so it is something to think about and discuss when you are discussing children's literature, especially the impact that it has on um, children's movies as well, because obviously from what we can tell, even just in our few lecturettes, um, they have a very um, interesting interconnected relationship between them. Um, so here are my sources um, and I will see you for the next video. Um, additionally, I have attached a PDF to um, the Grimm's Brothers um, 1842 version of um, Snee Witch and um, Snow White, the tale. Um, so you can take a look at that, read through, kind of think about how it compares to what you see in the movie or the general conception that you've seen in, um, from, in different um, manifestations of the Snow White story. Um, thank you. I'll see you in the next video.